So, my thoughts on the GH5. First of all, let me start by saying sorry this took so long because I know a lot of you guys are already waiting on this. And also, let me apologize for any noise, extra excessive noise you might hear in this video because Ace is running around, he's hyped today, and he's watching the movie. Okay, first of all, when I unboxed the GH5, I loved it. It was a great box. Um, the camera was nice, it came with everything I needed, I love it. Uh, also, I love this little guy right here, the core protector for the USB. Uh, whoever's calling me, they're gonna have to hold up. Oh, that's what I see. So this thing is pretty awesome for if you're going to be using an external monitor, uh, you know, whatever. It's cool. It's a cool little thing they included in the box. Boom. The GH5, man. Uh, me, personally, I use a lot of EF mount lenses. So I went with the Metabones Ultra. My main primary lens is probably going to be the 18-35. to Of course, this is a beast setup. Now, when I first got this, the downside to this was... Uh, I couldn't zoom from 18 to 35. I couldn't zoom in and out at all. And that's because there's probably a function within the firmware that's not functioning right. And there is a fix for it, but I'm kind of upset that I have to do that. Being that I paid so much money uh, off the rip, I shouldn't even have to be doing any fixes on anything. Everything should be working properly. So I'm kind of ticked off about it, but in the long run, I'm sure they'll fix the firmware and I know I'm gonna get great images out of this. So I'm not super pissed off, so. If you ordered the GH5 and you are using a uh, speed booster, I'm gonna let you know how, now how to fix it. Basically, there's a button on the side of the speed booster and when you go to cut your camera on, you push and hold that button on the side and you flip your camera on and hold it until it comes all the way on. Now, everything should function when you zoom in and out. And you also gotta push the button again to get your aperture controls as well. So, I know it sucks, but you have to do that every time that you cut your camera on if you want. If you're using the Sigma 18-35, to I haven't tested it on any other zoom lenses, but I assume maybe it probably will do that if you zoom in on any zoom lenses. Big key, until they get the firmwares updated. Also, another sucky thing is the XL, the Metabones XL. It has a little vignette in it. The Ultra and the OG original uh, speed boosters, they actually don't. So if you have an XL, in my opinion, I would say swap it out for an Ultra just so you don't have that vignette in your shots and stuff like that. But you know, it's totally up to you. You can stick with what you got, whatever. Now another issue with this guy is the 10-bit 4K. I was out with YC the other night on a shoot and he actually shot some performance clips on, at a shoot. And when we got back, uh, the, 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 the Kodak, I guess, isn't working it's not letting you see the actual file the bit watch the video on your computer in adobe premiere pro it also wasn't working in final cut x the 10 bit 4k files were not showing up so i was pretty pissed about that especially because it was like one of the main selling features for this camera and you know i was talking about it in recent videos because i was excited for it and i was getting other people excited for it and now panasonic kind of dropped the ball with it so i guess we have to wait for the next firmware for uh, Panasonic for this, for that to be fixed. If you want to use that, you can go download, I believe it's called Stream MPEG Stream Clip, or you can get Edit Ready. There are two programs, just Google them. I'll put a link in the description, but you can convert your 10-bit 4K files to ProRes uh, HQ, and that'll make them run. But with the workflow that I got, I shoot a lot, and I do a lot of editing, and I just don't want to have to be converting my files personally. That's just a personal preference. I don't want to be converting my files. So my personal preference, I'm not using the 10-bit until this thing gets a firmware update. I'm going to be using 8-bit. There's no major difference. I mean, seriously. Um, the camera seems to be a little heavier than the uh, GH4. It's kind of a little bigger, which isn't a problem. It's not a problem at all. It's actually pretty cool. Other than that, man, it's a great build. The, the monitor's nice. I'm going to go ahead and do some tests on this camera so I can show you guys what's up with it. I'm going to do some low-light tests, just some 4K and general tests some slow-mo tests yo but my overall you know feelings about the gh5 i'm super happy and i'm super excited about it i'm super happy and excited to create some new content man and i hope you guys stick around and you subscribe to the channel just so you can see what comes next because i'm gonna do some tests like i said before earlier i know i always repeat myself when i do videos i'm trying to not repeat myself so many times when i'm talking to you guys because it's really annoying when i watch myself back but that's what's gonna happen man so y'all look forward to that a lot of stuff coming for the gh5 it's real loud in here but that's it man these are my thoughts on the gh5 subscribe like this share this so other people know about those two issues with the 10 bit and also the speed boosters i hope this helps you guys man i really do slap the like button man i'll see you guys next time